One of the things that's worth pointing out is that if your stated goal is something like the removal of oppression, we can say, well, congratulations to you. You're, you're not on the sides of the tyrants. But if the consequence of your critique of Western civilization is that you throw the baby, the divine baby, we might say, out with the bathwater, and you don't recognize that this insistence on the intrinsic worth of each individual is actually a precondition for the, hmm. for the, for the, for your, for your objection to slavery, you're going to destroy the very thing that you think that you're promoting. I think we're doing that right now. I think now. we're doing that as oh, that well. That is what I think we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I mean, you put it beautifully, and I agree with what I've understood you've said, but I'd just add to it. How stupid are we if we not only fail to learn from one another, but we won't bring back the great figures of history and the learning of time to the table for their wisdom as well? Mm -hmm. Why not tap into that? Well, that's and we'll what avoid a heap more when you mistakes. Get educated. Yep. Yeah. Well, we and can we can we're certainly do that doing that with regard to Wilberforce. And that's so, my point. Well, it's it's kind of a miracle in some sense, and I I I truly don't understand this. You know, I I was in the UK earlier this year, and I went to one of the chapels there that had a I think it was in Oxford, but it might have been in Cambridge, that had a statue of Wilberforce. You know, yep. and that was a rather emotional moment for me because I know that he was he was a stunningly remarkable person. Yeah. And it was out of his efforts that. Well, that Britain organized itself for 175 years to suppress slavery. And so with his teammates. Like, Never forget his teammates. Right, right, right. Just, just Not, like budget repair in Australia. It's team. Right, but well, he led it. Well, he led and, it. and also with with his alliance with great figures of the past. I mean, yep. his morality was informed by his Christian faith, and yep. that emerged out of this great yep. Judeo-Christian tradition. I mean, he didn't do that. Yeah. He he did that by allowing that spirit to inhabit him. He didn't do that on his own, right? So but, but what I can't, I really can't understand, it's very difficult for me to understand why that story isn't more well-known and more celebrated, especially among people who purport to be advancing the doctrine that we need to fight against oppression. It's like, well, here's a man who did it. Here's why he did it. And the historical evidence on that is quite clear. And like you said, it's a perverse story because he was extremely entitled and an attractive person and... He died, wild away his he, he died time. penniless. Uh -huh. He gave it all away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So why don't we teach that story? Like, what the hell's going on exactly? Why would that be suppressed in I some real sense? It's really quite stunning. It is stunning, and it mm. troubles me deeply. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, Jordan, it's because it raises the question is of this. Was the Christ that he believed in real? Mm -hmm. And, oh, no, we don't want to confront that possibility. Mm -hmm. But I say, personally, I think every one of us should.